gone. You're gone because alumni and fans are not going to put up with that. And and that's I mean, with with Harbaugh, I mean, I wrote an article about him him being on the hot seat a little bit because I mean, but again, the reason that I say that is is you know he they you know had a bad ending to last season. They lost to Ohio State. They you know got blown out by my Gators in the bowl game. But the yeah. the thing is, but if he if they run the table like you said, then he, he his job is safe. And I think even if they win, let's say yeah. they win ten games this year, or they win nine or ten, he's got his job. And I think the one team that he has to beat this year is Ohio State. He's got to beat the Buckeyes yeah. at the end of the season. And if this this is the year to beat them, in my opinion. New head That's coach. What saying, yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to go into Urban Meyer because, again, I'm a Florida Gator fan. And we can't stand the ground he walks on. Um, I, so that's yeah. we call a different him, story. Around these parts, we call him Urban Meyer. So. Yeah. And then now he, 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 so he, he fakes a heart attack, goes to Ohio State. Now he fakes family issues, and he becomes the assistant athletic director. So what's he going to do next? Is he going to fake something else and become the commissioner of the NCAA? I mean, the guy moves up every he's gonna time. Go to, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, heard he's, I heard he's going to take his talent out to South Carolina, California. The USC? Hey, Bradley. That's what I heard. That is what I have heard. Really? Really? Hey, Bradley, I just joined up on the, uh, on the show, man. Oh, what's up? Hang on just a second. Hang on just a second. Okay, so here. Um, wow, so you, you've heard rumors that he's going to go to USC. Wow. That is the rumor, and I could see it happening, too, because they've got a murderer's row of a schedule. I was looking at, I was watching uh, College Football Live last night, and mm-hmm. they've got five or six top 10 or top 15 opponents. Mm-hmm. It could be a brutal year in Southern, Southern California, and they're another team. They're, they're, you, a pedig- they're a pedigree university. Do you see them winning the Pac-12 or Pac-10 or whatever they're nope. called out? I got Utah. I, I'm with you. I got Utah winning the Pac-12. Thank you. I'm not the only crazy one. I'm not the only one who sees Utah winning that division. I think the Utah uh, are to reckon with. That's my opinion. They're, they're yeah. a dangerous team. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just I, – I don't know. I uh, Everyone says Oregon, and, I, and I'm not hating the Ducks. Ooh. Bear with me. I'm not hating the Ducks at all. That's Nike University because that's where the Nike came from. But, I mean, right. to me, to me um, I'm not buying the hype on the Ducks. I'm not either. I mean, and, you know, also, too, you still got Washington. You know, they're a good football yep. team. No one's really talking about they need them. A quarterback. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that 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 is that is definitely, I, definitely true. I was thought, I was thinking about that. You were just mentioned we were talking about Pac ten or Pac twelve now, and I was mm-hmm. thinking I was thinking Washington. Washington was the first team that popped into my head, and mm-hmm. I was like, well, they need a quarterback. Yeah, they yep. need a quarterback. Look out. Well, and I mean, there there's a division that again I'm. Again, I've been I live I live most of my life in the southern United States and I'm an SEC guy. I will be to the day I die, other than USF obviously, which it would be a shame if they ever joined the SEC because they would get slaughtered by most of the SEC teams. But I mean, and there's no beneficial point for USF at this present moment to join the SEC. I don't get to watch a lot of Pac Ten football because by the time you sit and watch football all day, and by the time you're tired, you want to go to sleep, it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, you're ready to go to bed, and they're coming on to kick off because it's 7 o'clock in California <laughs> or Washington or Utah. They're just kicking everything Oregon. off. So it's kind of hard to – Oregon, it's kind of hard to sit up and watch games like that. So, yeah, and definitely. I used to work second shift for the last mm-hmm. couple of just finally – I just now switched to first year, so you know, ten o'clock. I'm 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 ready for more. You know, give me more. Yeah. So I watched a lot of Pac-10 for Pac-12 football. I okay. always like to catch that late late game, the eleven o'clock kick out in uh, Honolulu. It was always yeah. fun. There you go for Hawaii. For Hawaii, okay, okay. So, I I I'm a junkie, man. You're my crack. I I'm. 
So well, I mean, you know, I'm locked in and locked on. It's addicting, dude. It's addicting. And if, this is the time of the year where all of us addiction freaks get psyched up because it's college on Saturday and pro on Sunday. So, yeah, nah, it's I'm looking well, forward I, to the regular season. I mean, the NFL season, too. So I'm going to have you guys come back on again and talk about because I know you're a Patriots fan. So I'll have you and Von Allen come yeah. on and talk about the past. So that would be fun. But I, I mean, then, you know, I'm um, looking forward. I, got, I just got one more thing to touch on. I'm assuming, you know, okay. and I'll get off here if you want me to. Okay. Um, but uh, just talking about uh, Michigan kind of sticking on that theme, and mm-hmm. it, um, uh, there's a little bit of – I don't know I don't know how you feel about talking crap, but I it drives me crazy because, okay. you know, it's just bulletin board material. Mm-hmm. I would much rather just – you know, I think, I think it was um, Vince Lombardi that said – when you lose, when you win, say nothing. When you lose, say even less. It might have been Chuck Noll. It was one of them old right. time mean football guys. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the the Maryland and the Maryland head coach was the offensive coordinator in Alabama. Okay. And he got so he took the job at Maryland and was throwing shade at the uh, at Josh Gates, who is who okay. was at Penn State last year. And it, as a as some kind of offensive assistant, mm-hmm. and is now coming into Michigan to take over as the offensive coordinator. And for me, it's like you know, if I'm if I'm Maryland players, I'm like, shut up, you know, yeah. don't don't give them any reason to come down here and beat us even worse. Right. Don't give them any extra added motivation. Yep, I agree with you, bud. You know, bulletin board material. Bulletin board material. And then, right. and, you know, as, as a as a fan, I just one of the big things that frustrates me is is the pregame mm-hmm. serving it, it, it is between the fans and like I it it's fun in the off season mm-hmm. when there's no games going on and you're just you know right. kind of just ribbing each other and and I suppose right. it's an all in good fun but during the season I'm like can we not because then when we lose we have to eat so much crow could we not mm-hmm. give them any extra added uh, ammunition correct I agree. Yeah, I agree. Can, and, and and then you just you just look like a giant jerkwad when yeah. they uh, when you when you get beat, and it's like oh. correct. <laughs> but do you do you want to hang on the line? Right. I mean, I can. You or do you want to go? Yeah. I mean, you can hang. On. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. Okay. Let yeah, me I'll uh, let me hang on. Let me, let me get my. I think the next car I have will talk about Gator football. So I'm gonna get him on here. Real okay, quick. I, I thought you, I, I right. yeah, I was right. looking forward to that game. All right. Let's see. Is this Phil? How you doing today, Bradley? Yeah, this is I'm, Phil. How you doing? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Oh, everything's uh, pretty good. Uh, son just got back from his first football practice. Uh, he's, nice. he's the first year player this year, so so nice. uh, you know that's exciting. And got that going on, so uh, I'm sure. pretty, pretty proud. You know, it's taken me nine years to, as a father, to, to you know, be uh, uh, feel secure enough that he could play without getting hurt. So I, I'm, that, I'm hoping for a good year. <laughs> I guess that I'm sure you're a happy papa that you get to see him play. That's yeah. cool. that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. All right, uh, and and. and, and what? Also, I, I, a little, a little bit happy because they put him on defense, and he's going to be a linebacker, so he's taking after his dad a little bit. <laughs> nice, very nice, very nice. Okay. All right, my brother. Tell me about my. Tell us about. Tell me about our Gators this year. How are we going to do? How are we doing this year? All right. Um. So far, everything seems to be good. We do have a little bit of problem. Um. On our with our depth. Uh, on the okay. offensive and defensive line, we've had a couple. We've had a couple of injuries in the off season. Um, okay. Noah Banks, uh, offensive lineman, he he had been battling a disease for a long time, and mm-hmm. uh, he just had to hang up his cleats. And then we've got uh, another defensive lineman, uh, Concl- uh, Concliffe. Uh, he just hurt his foot and okay. uh, was already dealing with some constructions, uh, uh, concussion stuff. But then all of a sudden now he's got a foot injury that's taken him out for the year. So that's a little bit uh, a, a little bit disappointing. I mean, it's not on our starters, but you know as well as I do, having depth is a big thing in the SEC. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, 
I, I will say that the offensive line, um, as reported now, uh, you know, of course, you know, we're not going to know for sure how they are until, you know, Saturday, basically. Right. But right. Um, they, say, they say, you know, even though it's a, it's a focus point, and it has been a focal point in the off season uh, mm-hmm. for our coaching staff that, you know, even though we're replacing four starters, um, the guys that we're replacing them with, they have played a lot of football uh, in reserve and reserve for last year. So mm-hmm. it's not like the Gators, it's not like the Gators didn't know that this was coming. Um, right. They, you know, they, there's only one of those offensive linemen from last year that went to the pro early. The rest of them were seniors. We knew they were leaving. And so, this has been something that since Dan Mullen has been in town that he has been focusing on is to bring in, uh, you know, a, a, a good solid uh, offensive line. And that was obviously a focal point for last year as well. Um, okay. So, okay. Uh, you, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie as a fan. I, I, of course, I'm a little bit worried about it just because, you know, you replace four guys on your line. Um, you know, it's, got, it, it's something that normally is a difficult task to overcome. But um, I do need to remind you that the, uh, you know, 96 championship team, we had four new starters on the line that time too. So it's not, it's not something that can be a breaker and you can't be over, you know, it can't be overcome. That, that 96 season was an interesting season because we lost to Florida State during that year, and then we beat them in the national championship team because I remember that quite well, that they beat us. Were, yeah. were we at they, home they, or they, we played them in Tallahassee? Yeah, we were year. at home. They beat us, they beat right us in the swamp that year. They beat okay. us in the swamp, and it was a close game. It wasn't like it was a dominating thing, but um, I, I will say the better team won that um, and you know, it kind of it kind of hands down. It kind of goes along with the with the narrative in football that it's really hard to beat a team twice. And I, I believe that kind of was was part of the problem when when you talk Florida State that year was you know when you when you already play a team and you beat them in their house, it's kind of yeah. hard to turn around and beat them in a neutral site all at the same time. You know, the same season. You know, correct. So so, but how? We, we have go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, coming to the Miami game, to me, from what I'm looking at, and I know, again, as living here, you, you live in Georgia. You, I'm a, I've been a Gator fan since I've been able to crawl. The state of Florida, as far as college football goes, goes in cycles. The Gators have had their run. The Knowles yeah. have had their run. So Miami's due. And I'm not even going to bring up UCF because I don't even want to talk about them because I'm a, I write about USF. I don't even want to talk about UCF, but I know that's coming. But the thing is, Miami's coming around. I, to me, on paper, and what I've been reading, I just don't think they can stop us in offense. And that's just me. I think it's going to be a high-scoring football game on Saturday. I just don't think that they can stop us on offense. And you can tell me if I'm wrong because I'm not always right. But to me, I just don't see them – to me, I, I don't think they can stop the Gators on offense, in my opinion. Their defense is right, that's well, the best well, part of their team. Well, where, I, where I'm coming from on, on Miami is Miami is definitely going to uh, – I, I kind of – I see Miami as maybe 9-14 uh, and 14 this year, maybe. Okay. Um, I agree. I, I, you know that's that's where I see them at. I feel that they're going to be a little better than last year. Um, okay. My when you look at the when you look at the matchups, and I think that one of the biggest matchups in this game is going to be the fact that Miami is starting a true freshman left tackle and a true freshman right tackle. And, I saw and that. Why that's such an important. Right. Yeah. Why that's such an important thing to notice is that we have uh, all SEC and possibly a uh, all American, you know, defensive lineman who might be the best in the country with Jabari uh, Zuniga, who's going to be lining up against those freshmen. It's going to be a long night for those guys. Um, yeah. And Zuniga is as good as it gets. And okay. so, um, the, the, you know, it, it's, I, I think that's going to be a major problem for them. Also, mm-hmm. when you're starting a red shirt, uh, when you're starting a red shirt freshman at cornerback, and you're asking them to throw against possibly the best duo with Marco Wilson and C.J. Henderson in the nation, um, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to have some problems. Now, I will say this. 
Florida is only one injury away in the DB and the defensive back position 